Okay, so here we are over by the lathe. <clears throat> Nothing too fantastic that we need to get done here. Um, just going to take this boss, spin one side of it down just to be a straight shank about five millimeters deep. That way I can slot it into a hole and just weld around it, weld it in. Nice and easy. And I have some material here. So we'll chuck that up in the lathe, part off a chunk, and use that to make our boss for this element. Now the element is inch and a quarter BSP, which is a 41 point something or other diameter millimeter on this thread here. We'll be using this as our gauge, so when we go to thread cut, I'll be matching exactly to what's on here. Um, but we'll get that we'll get that started. Um, don't really need to say too much while it's happening, so I think we break out some music. So I've got the blank spun up and um, just got a bit of the shoulders down to 57 millimeters, which is the size of the hole saw that I have, which I'll use to stick a hole in the side of the um, side of the tube. Um, plenty of shoulder there to, for, to weld up to, um, and there's just a recess internally so you can actually uh, just just thread the amount of thread that you need. It's not going to be threaded all the way through. Uh, just set the lathe for 11 TPI, which is what the thread is. Uh, just double check. Always double check you got it all set right. <laughs> and that should... I'm using uh, high speed steel. Uh, it's plenty good enough for what we're doing. It's not gonna. It's not one of those situations where it needs to seal on the thread. It's, it's gonna seal on the. Um, it's gonna see. Uh, it's got a O-ring to seal against. Hence why there's a nice lead-in sh uh, chamfer. on a couple points and just do a scratch pass. Zero at the end. That looks 
looks plenty good to me. Yeah, I can just eyeball that and say so and tell that that is actually pretty close. Pretty close to exact. Yep, getting close. I'm still about half a millimetre to a millimetre down on the threads. So I'll just keep <clears throat> winding on. And uh, for those watching, and you'll notice that I am being a lot more uh, brutal than you might normally see on... Uh, you might normally see people ta t turning threads, taking 0.1 cuts, 0.2 cuts, and you know, little cuts and just working their way up to it. I have been turning threads, large diameter threads on lathes, for a very, very, very long time. Um, when it came to machining for the super yachts, we would be spinning up threads 100 diameter with a four millimeter pitch and they'd want it in a hurry so you'd learn to spin up threads a lot quicker than you really should um i'm not saying you should do it that way but i know how i can push the machine and the tooling to get the job done because i've done it so many times before um it's just one of those things where, you know, practice doing it often enough and you, you, you learn the limits. You know, you learn the limits of the machine, you learn the limits of the tooling, you learn the limits of, of you. Um, we used to have races, actually, um, between me and some of the other guys in the workshop. We used to see who could turn a thread the fastest. Uh, on, and I'm, I'm, I'm significantly slower than I used to be. Because back in the day, there was a gentleman I used to work with. Uh, some, if he's out there somewhere, Mr. Nenard. He would spin threads at a thousand RPM, regardless of the pitch. Guy had reflexes like a freaking cat. It was literally insane. I don't recommend anyone doing that. I almost caught up with him one day. I could almost spin three as fast as him, but he was always the quickest. See, that's a snug fit right there. I want a little bit looser. See, for comparison's sake, uh, these, this thread that I'm turning right now, I'm doing it about a hundred RPM. I'll, I'll spin it up now and see what the gauge says. Hundred and thirteen RPM. So, yeah, just from the sake of, and we got that quick just from doing it every single day. Um, last couple cuts I'm just going to sit on the same the same distance and run it back a couple times just to alleviate spring in the tool because I'm using quite a small tool 
it's quite a large thread. I could fit a, a much, much bigger boring bar in there, but I don't have one, so. This is just a hand ground, a hand ground threading tool. And there we go. That is a nice, a nice fit. It is not a loose fit in the slightest. It is quite a snug fit. I actually might take a couple more cuts out of it, but I want a, a, a fit more on the side of snug um, because I want it to go in and not come out, basically. Um, I'm not intending... I'm not expecting the threads to um, alter that much when I weld it. Um... I'm also probably going to end up welding it with the, the, the element in place. And there we go. Easy as that. I'm quite happy with how that screws in there. That is going to work very well. The only thing I'm probably going to have to do is make the chamfer that the o-ring seals against much larger. So I'll do that now. And that's just a chamfer run in by hand. Plenty good enough for what it does. And now it's much tighter on that shoulder. So when you nip down on that, it'll squish that o-ring into, um, into that gap and seal up good and solid. So, we are now that much closer to being done. Welcome back. It's a new day. Uh, I went ahead yesterday. Uh, the camera ran out of power and so did the microphone so I just I went and drilled two holes um, sorry I didn't record it um, if you don't know what drilling holes looks like then I can't help you um, but the urine drain plug and the element boss element screws in nicely so that'll be good and watertight so what we're going to do now is we are going to actually that check for water tightness. I'm going to screw the ball, the ball valve, the drain valve on the bottom. Teflon tape. And no, this fitting is not new, and neither is the ball valve because this is just stuff I had lying around that came probably off of an old compressor setup that I rejigged at another work sometime. You, know, you just have parts lying around, you might as well use it. Trying to get the valve pointing somewhere. intended it to be that way. So that is closed. Now we'll wind in our heating element. like so. And 
now I can haul this outside and I will fill it with water and see how it goes. So give me a moment and I will just quickly drag it outside. So here we are just outside the workshop, just by the grass there, by the front door, and I'm going to set you guys right there, and we'll fill this thing full of water. I'm not expecting to see a leak immediately. What I'm looking to see is once the column of water gets high enough in the tube, then it will actually start to leak as there's weight pushing down on it. That's where it's gonna find any, any, any leaks that might come through. And I can already see there's at least one leak. You can see that right there. There's one leak coming through right in there. We're basically pretty much full at this stage, and if that is the only leak, I'll bring you guys around here just so you can see. So right there, we have a small pinhole leak right in there. So I'll just grind that out and fill it. be a good test of the drain valve. And we're empty. Or at least most of the weight. Just tip the reset. And drag it back inside. So our leak originated from here. There's that really nasty weld right there. So I'm just going to grind that away and fill it back up again. Crap. I was supposed to pull that out before I did that. Please don't melt the uh, o ring. Okay, we're good. O ring is not melted. And that seals, that'll seal that up nicely. So I bet if we do a water test now, we will have no leaks. So here we are, we are full, and we have no leaks to speak of.
a little bit of water on the ground is from me uh, rinsing the outside. And because we have some bad weather on the way, I'm just going to tip this over, drain the majority of the water out of it, uh, give it a very quick wire brush to get the surface rust on the outside, and then we'll drag it inside and see if it boils. If you have a paint can with a lid that no longer fits properly, stretch a rubber glove over it. It'll stop it drying out. Well here we are guys. Finally got a boil going. It's a low boil, but it's boiling. So it took about two and a bit hours, just over two hours, which is actually not too far off the calculations, with considering there's no insulation, uh, the ambient air temp, volume of water, blah 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 blah. So I'm going to take this gun barrel now, and I have previously, oh, sorry about the lighting, it's kind of hard to see, I have previously rusted it. So we are going to hang it, and see what happens. And here it goes, bubbling away happily. So we'll be back in about 40 minutes or so. So there we have it, one big boiling vessel all completed in position painted uh, thankfully the paint I use is just perfect for people like me who are really impatient because it dries to the touch very very quickly especially if you put it over um, treated rust it seems to uh, the, I'm not sure what it is with the the rust converter but it seems to kick it off quite quite quickly um, it will be insulated at some point I haven't wired it yet and I'm not going to do that on video because I'm not an electrician and I don't want uh, people to come knocking on my door saying that my house is going to burn down 
because they've watched me wire this thing. So I'm going to wire it off camera. Uh, I'll probably insert a bit of footage of it boiling if it does boil, or I'll plug it in, fill it up with water, and see how it goes. Uh, if you don't see this video, then it means I got electrocuted and died. Yeah, oh, we'll see you in a minute.